Hey, everybody. So glad to have you guys here. And I don't want to take any time away from what we're about to talk about. So without further ado, Ashley Delf is here to teach us a lot of great things. Go, Ashley. Oh, thanks, Beth. Hi, guys. My name is Ashley, and I'm here to talk to you guys about toxins and greenwashing and the big misconception that a lot of people um, feel like around greenwashing. A lot of people have this misconception about what it really is. So, and I was one of those people for a long time. So I'm here to kind of clear the air, um, teach you guys some truths behind what greenwashing is, marketing misdirect and toxins in general. Um, so greenwashing is a term that a lot of people use um, a lot of times for companies that have toxins in them, um, but they claim that they don't, or they claim, claim that they're good for you and they're safe and they don't have any harmful ingredients in there. But the truth is a lot of these companies still have these harmful chemicals in there and they get away with it because it's not something that is really, um, can't think of the word, <laughs> having a brain fart, but not something that's reg regulated. There we go. Not something that's regulated. Um, so it's, it's very tricky. So I'm gonna teach you guys some tips and tricks on how to read labels and things like that. Um, so first off, I'm just gonna tell you guys what greenwashing truly is. And then I'm gonna kind of go into what I believe that greenwashing was for a long time. Um, and what a lot of other people um, think that it is as well and talk about toxins, okay? So greenwashing is basically when companies, um, you know, use the word green or eco-friendly, um, eco things like that. Um, but in reality, it's considered a misleading marketing tactic because that word is appealing, right, um, to a lot of consumers, but it's not regulated not regulated. So a lot of these companies out there use this as a trend um, to steer you <laughs> towards their product. Um, so agencies all over the world, you know, are using this and there's a stance right now against greenwashing and more and more companies are, you know, becoming more aware of toxins and being more environmentally friendly and things like that. And that's what a lot of people are looking for. You know, more and more people are becoming aware of what they're putting in their bodies and on their skin, and they want to use products that are more friendly to our earth and things like that. So more companies are slapping this on their product just so that you'll buy it, right? Because they can, because they can, because it's not regulated. Um, so using bud words like green, naturally based, are easy to use and poorly regulated. Um, so that's basically what greenwashing is. It's more about, you know, eco-friendly and products that aren't harming the earth and that are good, you know, that are recycling and like they um, have refillable packets and things like that. So when I heard, first heard the term greenwashing, I thought it was more about people that claim that their products were clean, right? And they would put things on their products that, this big no list. So our product has none of these things in it. So I'm like, oh, this is really good, right? Because it has this big no list. That's a big red flag, you guys. Um, you always should be reading your ingredient list. Never pay attention to the front of the bottle because none of that matters. <laughs> but what matters is the ingredients, right? What matters is those ingredients. So always make sure that you're flipping your bottle over and reading those. And I'm gonna teach you guys some simple tricks on how to read labels without feeling overwhelmed and being like, I don't even know where to start because it can be a very overwhelming. Um, so I, I'm gonna teach you guys some tricks on that. Um, so these companies are saying, yeah, our products are safe. And then 10 years later, you're ending up with cancer, infertility, you know, all these other health issues, um, you know, hormonal issues, even depression, anxiety, all of this can stem from toxins, which is absolutely crazy. And um, I'm here to tell you guys that I was somebody that suffered with infertility for years. And I'm, I'm a, a makeup artist 
if you guys see my makeup artist chair back here. Um, so I was putting all these toxins on not only my body, but all of my clients' bodies every day, not realizing that what I was doing was to myself and to all these people were, you know, was killing them or making them sick, you know, or infertile, you know, all these things. Um, so all these, you know, things are carcinogenic, things like that. Um, and it's actually worse. If you think about it, the beauty industry is worse than, than the tobacco industry. It's scary to think about, but it is because there's literally thousands upon thousands of ingredients that are hidden in your hair care, your skincare, your makeup, that is all pretty much hidden in one ingredient. Does anyone know what that ingredient is? Dun, dun, dun. It's fragrance. The word fragrance. Fragrance is a huge one, you guys. Um, you should not be using products with fragrance in it. And the reason why is because that word alone, anything with fragrance or perfume on it first is really bad for your skin. Um, it's going to cause, you know, eczema, rosacea, like all these things that you don't want, um, irritation, acne. Um, so you don't want to be using that <laughs> for those reasons. But then it goes a lot deeper than, than the skin. It actually can cause, you know, cancer and infertility and reproductive issues. It can cause, um, you know, early birth, all these things just from that one ingredient, because literally thousands, I think that there's like over 3000 ingredients that can be hidden within the word fragrance or perfume in a product. So scary, so scary because it's a marketing secret. It's a, it's their trade secret, right? Their, their fragrance is their secret. So they put that word on there and they can hide all these things in that one ingredient. So that's definitely a number one easy way to tell if your product is safe is fragrance. Look at that and you know, it's got fragrance in it. It's not good for you. All right. So there are a lot of ways because I know we all want to smell pretty. We all want to smell good, right? <laughs> we don't want to give up our smell me goods, right? There are a lot of ways that you can still have that, you know, those essences with essential oils and herbs and things like that and still smell good and have, you know, smelly goods in your home, things like that, just from natural sources, not synthetic, right? So don't worry, <laughs> you can still smell good. Um, there's a lot of clean perfumes out there, things like that. Um, you can use oils and stuff like that as well. Okay. Um, so I'm going to give you guys an example. Now, a lot of dermatologists recommend Cetaphil and CeraVe. Okay. And, um, I was one of those people that used both of these, cause that's what my dermatologist told me to use and told me that that was good and safe and all the things. Right. Um, but my skin never never liked moisturizer. I always struggled with, you know, my skin being so dry because no, none of the moisturizers I was using would help my skin. So I just gave up moisturizer altogether. I was just like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. So I started using oils until MIG came around. And then I, you know, learned all of this about why water, that's the second ingredient you should look for in your products, okay? Water. Um, because if water is in your product, not only is it going to actually pull the moisture from your skin into the air, it also means that the product has to have emulsifiers, stabilizers, preservatives, all of those things because water is not a stable ingredient, which is crazy, right? Because we think water, how is water bad? It's, you know, it's water but it's not stable. So if you see water, which is basically pretty much the first, second or third ingredient in your product, it's not good, right? Um, and that's why I love that MIG is waterless and it's been such a game changer for me and my family with the waterless moisturizer. I can finally use lotion, guys. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> um, so waterless has definitely been a game changer. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that, but that's another ingredient to look for in your product. Not only um, is it, you know, going to have those emulsifiers, stabilized preservatives that are going to 
really affect your skin's microbiome, which in the long term is going to age you. Um, so you don't want that. You don't want, obviously, we all want to stay young and vibrant. So um, all of those um, chemicals and preservatives and things like that age you in the long run. So you might see those short term results, but in the long run, you're going to be like, if you've ever like change, keep changing your products every six months to a year or whatever, because they're not working for you anymore. Has anyone ever experienced that before? Right. So that's probably why. <laughs> so then you find something new and you try that for a little bit, it works for a little bit and then it stops. So you try something new, right? That's probably why, because, because of this, right? So um, it starts aging you. And um, so you might see those short-term results, but then in the long run, it, you're, you're just gonna have more damage to your skin. Um, so you don't want anything with toxins in it at all. So look for clean ingredients um, in, your, in your products. So fragrance, and water are two big ones that are easy to spot. And then um, phenoxyethanol is another really big one. So that is in a lot of products that claim to be clean that aren't. And a lot of people say that phenoxyethanol is, um, is safe if it's under 1%, right? In a product, just like a lot of other chemicals. Oh, well, it's such a tiny, tiny amount. It's not gonna affect you, right? No, <laughs> it is because your how many products do you use in a day? Okay, all of those one percents add up. So if you're using five products that have one percent phenoxyethanol in it, then it's not safe for you, right? Um, phenoxyethanol is a big one that's that causes infertility and it's very unsafe for babies and infants. Um, it is in a lot of baby wipes. So make sure you guys are checking your baby wipes. Um, it's in a lot of baby wipes. It was in ours that we were using until I found out that, um, yes. Can somebody spell that in the, in the chat here? Let me, I don't know if I can or not. <laughs> I don't want to mess things up. I'll do <laughs> sure, it. I can I'm do sure it. Somebody in here knows how to spell it. Um, if somebody could please type. Yes. Thank you, Beth. All right. So yeah, phenoxyethanol is huge. Fragrance. Anything with pegs, PEGs, um, DMDM is another really bad one um, that's easy to spot. Anything with parabens um, and petroleum. So petroleum is actually in CeraVe. Um, and if you guys do not know, petroleum is, it's the same thing that they use in gasoline. Do you really want to be putting gasoline <laughs> on your skin? That's basically what it is. And it's very poor clogging. Um, so you gotta be really careful with that because you don't wanna be putting, this is actually something that my husband used to use on his face. And he would always complain about his, his pores being clogged and blackheads. And I'm like, it's because of the lotion that you're using. <laughs> um, so, so now he uses the MIG facial lotion and he loves it. And he raves about it and he can't stop touching his face and talking about it. He loves it. So. I'm finally, I'm glad that I finally got him on the MIG train because he, uh, it was hard to do, um, you know how men are. So, so yeah, definitely um, stay away from those. So toxins can affect your gut health, your microbiome, um, you know, your eyes, your skin, your reproductive organs, your endorse, it's an, they're endorsin disrupting, preterm birth, mercury poisoning, hormones, you know, all these things, asthma, anxiety, depression, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, you know, skin disorders, cancer, all of these things, guys. So if these are some things that are important to you, then you should really be looking at the products that you're using. There are a lot of safe options out there. Um, so yeah, you just, you just have to read those ingredients. Never trust the front of the label. Um, so hopefully those little tips and tricks that I taught you and, you know, ingredients, the easiest ones to spot, again, fragrance, phenoxyethanol, uh. parabens, and um, water. Okay. Um, now with water, some companies 
which are very, which is very rare, but some companies will actually use preservatives that are naturally derived, which most companies won't because they don't want to spend the money on that. <laughs> so if you see like collateral silver or things like that in your product, that's really, that's a really good preservative because it's natural. Um, so I just wanted to touch on that really quick. Okay, so um, I just wanted to share some st statistics with you guys really quick. Um, I know I talked about um, how chemicals can destroy your natural skincare protective barrier, um, destroys the structure underneath the surface layers of your skin. So it's gonna do more you know, harm than good. Um, and it's also a lot of these, you know, chemical exfoliants and stuff like that over, well, a lot of things will over exfoliate your skin, um, which isn't good. So you try to be careful with that as well. So the EU has banned over 1,371 chemicals, but the US has only banned 11, 11, you guys, how crazy is that? So crazy. The FDA, the FDA cannot require companies to test its ingredients or products. It also cannot require companies to report injuries and even death. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, so you wanna make sure that you are avoiding these dangerous chemicals. Um, then you should be using skincare and hair care, beauty products that are so natural, you could, they're, you're, they're safe enough to eat. Obviously they're not gonna taste good. <laughs> You want to try to find products that are, you know, ingredients you can understand, you can read, you know what they are. Um, those are going to be the best options for you and the safest. And your body was designed to heal with nature, not with chemicals. And a lot of these chemicals out there are things that they try to remake. They're trying to basically remake a natural ingredient. <laughs> that comes from nature, but a lot of these chemicals they make in labs. So um, I just thought I would share that really quickly. So another study that I saw that I thought was really cool is they did this study on beeswax-based skincare versus retinol-based skincare. And I know a lot of you guys probably know what retinol is. It's a very popular ingredient in the skincare world. A lot of people use it for, you know, acne and um, anti-aging, all those things. So they did this study, which I was like mind blown about because we all know and love beeswax here at MIG, right? <laughs> it's like our, um, it's one of our main ingredients in our, in our products. So they did this study and it, beeswax is actually a natural form of retinol. It's very high in vitamin A. So these doctors and medical team did this study. And if you think about it, medical grade honey is used in hospitals, right? They use it on people with severe burns and injuries in hospitals. So beeswax honey kind of go hand in hand. So if you can think about how healing honey is, beeswax is right up there with that. Um, so in this study, they compared beeswax to synthetic ingredients, retinol-based skincare, chemical-based skincare. And the beeswax-based skincare performed a whopping 850% better at improving skin's appearance than chemical-based skincare. I thought that was amazing. Um, and I've definitely seen people have incredible results here. So if you haven't tried waterless skincare yet, you totally should get with the person that invited you to this um, class and um, ask them to give you a little bit of a skincare consultation. They can set you up with a some products that are perfect for you. So I just want to talk a little bit more about water before I get off here and products. So if water is in your product, not only is it going to have all these, you know, nastiness in there, all the chemicals, preservatives, it's going to pull the moisture, you know, from your skin into the air instead of locking it in because it's not rich in humectants, right? But you're basically paying for what you get at the kitchen sink, y'all. Stop it, <laughs> stop it, okay? So your product, if one of the first ingredients is water, that means that it has up to 95% water in your product and very little to no actual ingredients in that product that are actually good for your skin or they're actually, you know, the 
active ingredients that you want, right, are going to be very low to little because they're all watered down. That's why your products are so cheap at the drugstore because they're all water-based. Um, so you're actually getting more bang for your buck. You might be spending a little bit more at, at you know, up front, but your product's going to work and it's going to be more beneficial to you because it's not watered down. Right. So you're going to get more bang for your buck. You're going to get more active ingredients. If you're choosing waterless um, products, you're also going to be, you know, not putting chemicals in and on your skin. Um, so yeah, emulsifiers, preservatives, all those things, wash your skin out, stripping the natural barrier. So you're going to have all these skin issues, things like that. Um, so yeah, I think I covered everything. I just wanted to share that. I think that's very interesting. I love that we're waterless here. Um, so yeah, so don't get tricked by the, the mixture because a lot of companies do that, right? With the greenwashing, the mixture of plant-based and synthetic, right? So this product right here, <laughs> when I first started um, on my clean living journey, my husband was like so proud of himself. He bought this body wash and it's still under our sink. And our bathroom, I found it when I was looking for his old CeraVe under there. Um, I found this, it's an every man jack body wash. And it says right here, naturally derived. And he was like all excited. He was like, yes, babe, look, I found body wash. It's natural. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, let me see the ingredients. So I flipped it over. First ingredient, guess what it is? Water. <laughs> so what does that mean guys? That means that it has emulsifiers, stabilizers, phenoxyethanol, and even has fragrance and perfume in it, guys. <laughs> so make sure that you are flipping that ingredient, that you that bottle over and reading those ingredients. Okay. Um, never trust the front of the bottle. Um, so I just wanted to show you guys an example of that. This one also has the no list on it. It says, um, you know, it's vegan, it's gluten-free, cruelty-free, naturally derived. Um, so it has like all of those little things on the back. So just got to be careful with that. All those tricky, all the tricky marketing. So I just wanted to share um, an example product for you before I get off here. So if you guys have any questions, just get with the person that invited you here. I'm sure they would be happy to help you. Um, I know one of the really great app that helped me a lot when I was just starting out is called, um, Think Dirty. It's a great app. You can actually, um, like if you're at a store, you can pull, pull up the barcode on a product and it'll pull it up and tell you if like rated zero to 10, how clean it is. Um, so that's really helpful when you're just starting out. Uh, so I just wanted to tell you guys about that too. So um, another thing too, that you guys should check out is Toxic Beauty Documentary. Um, that's really good to watch. So check that out if you can. Um, I watched that and I was like, mind blown. So definitely check that out. It's super scary. So hope you guys, um, learned something about this, um, learned something new tonight. Um, share in the comments below something that you like, if you, anything shocked you, if you learned anything new, what was your favorite thing that you learned? So yeah, I'm going to hop off of here. Thank you guys for hopping on with me and watching and yeah, hope you guys will have a great rest of your evening. Thank Bye. you, Ashley. This was awesome. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I was like all over the place. No, you're great. So it was great. <laughs> Thank you. I learned you're a lot. Awesome. Oh, awesome. I'm so everybody glad. Have, everybody have a great night and get with the person who invited you here. Just like Ashley said, lots to take in. Have a yeah. great night. All right. Bye, guys.